The amazing thing about water is that it moves by gravity without using any electricity, all on its own. Water's movements govern by the laws of physics, and if you understand these laws, then you can become like a wizard, designing water supply and irrigation systems that are powered only by the weight of the water itself. So let's dive right in. The most important variable in this equation is the elevation, or head, of the water. The height of the water above its point of use is going to be a key factor in the amount of pressure available. The key number to know is that for about every two and a half feet of head, the water pressure is one PSI, or pound per square inch. In metric, every one meter is one tenth of one bar of pressure, and 10 meters equals one bar of pressure. So what does that mean for you? Well, if you're in a flatter landscape, then you can just open a valve from a pond or a tank and use flood irrigation, furrow irrigation, or basin irrigation. People have been practicing low pressure gravity irrigation for ages. In that case, it doesn't really matter how high the water pressure is because the water's being directed by ditches or furrows through the contours of the land or water from a tank can flow through a hose at a very low pressure to water plants or fill water basins. But if you're actually putting water into a pipe and then using it for irrigation using sprinklers, drip emitters, or even piping water into a house for a supply, then how high the water is above your point of usage will in part determine the pressure. For example, the minimum pressure needed to run drip irrigation is 10 PSI, or pounds per square inch. So 10 PSI times 2.5 equals 25 feet. Your water storage needs to be at least 25 feet above your drip system. In meters, that's about 7.5. But how many emitters or sprinklers can you put on one water line and maintain pressure? That's gonna depend on the flow rate. And the flow rate's gonna be determined by how big your pipes are. The same goes for watering livestock. What is the peak livestock demand on your system? How big do the pipes you're using need to be to supply enough water flow? Check the links below for resources about flow rates and sizing pipes. It could be that your drip system will run on lower pressure, and it depends on how extensive it is, but that's the industry standard. The optimum pressure needed to run a sprinkler system is at least 30 PSI. It depends on the size and the volume of your system, of course, but at 30 PSI, your water storage needs to be at least 75 feet above where your sprinklers are outletting. So you either need a water tower or a water storage on a site with significant elevation changes. So every irrigation type has a range of pressure. For instance, for drip irrigation, it's between 10 and 30 PSI. So if you have more than 75 feet of head, and there will be so much pressure, it will blow your emitters off. So you would need to add some sort of pressure reducer. They also make special sprinkler heads that operate on lower pressure. So the point with all this is that you need to look up the irrigation product that you want to use and check what the minimum and maximum pressures are that they can handle. And then figure out if you have enough head for your water storage to supply that pressure. It's not just elevation that determines the water pressure though. There's also friction loss in the pipes. So the equation you need to know is head pressure minus friction loss equals pressure at the pipe outlet. Now how do you figure out what your friction loss is? Friction loss depends on your pipe size and material. And this all involves complex math to figure out. But luckily, the math has all already been done for you and there are charts that you can look up to determine the friction loss by pipe type and diameter. I've posted links in the description to places that you can find those charts. There are other pieces of a gravity water system I want to share with you as well. The first one is called a float valve. A float valve allows you to keep a steady level of water in a trough or a tank using a float attached to a lever. When the water level goes down, the float lowers along with it and pulls down the lever which opens a valve. When the valve opens, it refills the water and the float rises along with the water level, moving the lever and then closing the valve. So in that way, the water is always kept at a consistent level. This is really useful when you have a watering trough for animals 
because the water never runs out and is constantly refilled to a full level. Another fascinating and useful piece of gravity irrigation or water supply system is the siphon. So let's say that we have a water storage at the top of our irrigation system that we want to use for water supply. In this example, we will use a pond, but it could also be a tank. The siphon is a way that we can get water out of the pond to pressurize pipes below without having to install a pipe through the bottom of the dam wall. A siphon works because gravity is always pulling down on water. Here we see the water intake in the pond at this level and the outlet located below the intake by at least four feet. But the water has to travel up and over to get to that lower level. This is done by having this vent at the top of the siphon. The siphon is primed by pouring water into this vent. That's how the siphon gets started. But then the vent is closed and the siphon forms a suction. So even as the pond level goes down, the water gets pulled up and over this hump from the intake to the outlet. The vent is also there to release air from the top of the siphon system because an airlock can form where a giant air bubble blocks the water from coming through the pipes. It's really a brilliant way to get water up and over an embankment without needing to use fuel or electricity. The last piece I wanna share is about gravity irrigation in rainwater harvesting systems. When you have rainwater that runs off of a roof, it flows downslope into a gutter and then flows down into a collection tank. But let's say that your tank is far away from the roof and you cannot suspend a pipe in the air like this over a long distance. You can actually take your pipe down to the ground, have it travel to the tank, and then head back up to the tank inlet. Remember, water always finds its level. As long as the inlet on the tank is lower than the inlet at the gutter, then the water will flow down the pipe, and as it's filled by the rainwater, the level in the pipe will rise until it spills into the tank. This is called a wet system, and these pipes will always be filled with water because they are an extension of the water level of the tank. So there you have it, a broad survey of gravity irrigation principles and systems. So you can now use the innate properties of water and gravity to do the work for you. Are you ready to transform deserts, create lush backyards and feed communities? In my almost 30 years as a permaculture designer traveling the world, I've put everything I learned into Oregon State University's online permaculture design course, or PDC. The PDC and PDC Pro are the ultimate ways to begin mastering permaculture. Me and my team guide you through over 20 assignments with more than 100 hours of top quality video lectures and resources, all focused on developing your own property or project throughout the course. You'll get personalized feedback from a dedicated instructor in a small group setting. People are always asking me, how can I be part of the solution? This is your starting point. Check the link below for upcoming courses and join us in creating a better world for everyone. See you in class.